Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Draft House. I am Joel. I am Hugh. And today we are continuing the top 100 games of all time. Um, 80 through 71. All right, we're getting in there now. Okay. Because everything below this garbage. Yeah, it's hot garbage. I don't know why we bother talking about it. Get, get out of here. Crappy. Uh, so my number 80 is from Renegade Games. It has a book theme. <laughs> it is Ex Libris. I think I've got a name here. It's Ex Libris. Uh, it is a... First, it's a great looking game. Looks fantastic. Has a lot of movable, true, adjustable pieces to change the game. True story. Uh, different, a different. I want to say faction, but different character that you can play that has a superpower. Um, but in superpower librarian. Yeah. In general, though, it is a worker placement game where you're buying books and putting them in front of you in a tableau, but you're trying to put them in order. And creating a sort of bookshelves right. that are alphabetical order. Yes. Right. And depending on what happens during the game, certain books are outlawed and certain books are worth more, more points. And uh, it's a point salad game. Yeah, there's, there's quite a few ways to score, if right. I remember correctly. And, but it is a game that I, uh, I, I really like. And... Uh, we don't play it a lot, but... It is, I've only played this one time myself. It has been a long I've time. I've played it three or four times, but every time I play it, I realize how much I like it. Uh, so it just kind of sits there. And I looked at my last list from last time, and it was right in there, same same spot, basically. Right I, in there. I I remember playing it, but I like it's been a very long time, so I don't have much to say on it. I remember trying to juggle... The like layout of your books right. was kind of interesting. I remember there was a line of stuff, but I don't remember exactly <laughs> what those things were. Well, they were places you can go, and that's where you would put your workers. Okay, but yeah. they but they changed, yeah. right? It wasn't so they would fall off. It's a worker placement, but it's not. So most worker placements, it's like a board, and it's like you right. go to this thing, these are do cards, this, and this was like an alternating path, yeah. right? So, so my number eight is Ex Libris. Uh, I mean, if like I said, if you like worker placement games and you like like a funky themes, it's a good one to try. How about yeah? How about Spell Librarian? <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, my eighty. Okay, number eighty, right behind you. Keep looking at it. Uh, number eighty is Vindication. Ah, good game. Uh, which I bet we'll talk about at least one, at least one more time. At least one more time. Um, Vindication is. Uh, you're basically dropped onto an island. Um, you are... Is it a scum? Are you scum? I yeah, you start out as, like, a terrible person, yeah, basically. Scum. And Vindication is actually trying to, like, build yourself back up. Um, but you do that by um, exploring, like, through the island that you're on, collecting um, different attributes. Yeah. Um, and then using those for uh, has weird collecting movement. items, fighting uh, various um, yeah. monsters, I guess. But only in certain locations. But only in certain locations. Um, On this weird hex board that you build while you play. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> the exploration yeah. part, is that you decide which way you go and like what gets flipped. Um, I know that with this stuff... In the expansions, it can become more asymmetrical. But it's very symmetrical, like, at the start. Right. Um, and the board will sort of change that because it'll sort of determine what you have access to. But that's not... I mean, the other people can just come to that side of the board if that's, like, stacked the way they want it. Um, right. So it's very, like, evenly matched, even though there's the random components. Right. Um, but that's basically just the exploration. And then once that's open... It's all sort of fair game. Um, and you're just doing your best that you can with a very small amount of, like, movement, a very small amount of uh, change from, like, turn to turn. Right? So they, they're they sort of very impactful every turn, and that no, no particular one is super impactful, but that means if you fall behind a step, 
it's harder to then like right. catch back up that one step. So it's very it's very chess like. Locally made too. I believe they are from Portland, Orange Nebula. They're down the road. I met yeah. them at um, Guardian Games. Yeah, didn't we? This like I think we played a game with them, not their own game. We played something else with them. Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. Orange Nebula. Yeah, was, yeah this is a good yeah, game. Um, we're gonna talk about it later on. We're gonna. Well, we will talk about it again. <laughs> um, but just for the people that are here with us now, yeah, uh, really good components. Yeah. Um, Spendy. Uh, as I remember. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're, this is definitely one of the games where you're... It's like $80. Uh, yeah, but also, like, there's sort of the immediate component. We talk about this... I don't know how much online... Offline we talk about this constantly. Yeah. They didn't. They don't put out, like, a cheaper version of this game, right. right? These components and all this stuff feels like it's important and part of the game. And if your game is good then you can just put the, the sticker on there, the price tag on there that you need to and put out that proper version instead of having the sort of eh, fiddly, it's cheaper feeling version. Except I, there's miniatures in this game. There doesn't have to be miniatures. No, I mean, that's maybe one thing you can one sitting on that card over there for the expansion, which I'm just like, <laughs> this giant miniature, I'm just like, that's not used in the game. Sure, but I'm talking about, like, uh, the board pieces, the actual yeah, metal tokens. The game trays the, are all great. You get your own little thing, and the thing slides in it. It's yeah, cool. and, and it's saying if you have a game that can hold up on its own, like, if you have a game that's worth doing that, then do that. Don't right. put out the don't put out the, the soft version, right? Right. Because then eventually I'm just going to want the bigger... And now instead of paying, paying the $80 up front, I'm going to spend $140 to get the first version and then right. the actual good version. Like, right. just put it out and let it stand on right. its own two feet. He's talking to you, Endeavor. He's talking to you, Endeavor. <laughs> I don't want your hot garbage tissue. <laughs> Give me my cannons made of plastic. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's my number 80. Vindication. Okay. Number 79 is a game you introduced me to. You knew it as a, a different game originally, but when you introduced it to me, you had to get the new version, which was uh, Hive Mind, which is sitting just off camera right yeah. there. Uh, Hive Mind is a originally game... called. What were you thinking? Uh, in this version of the game, you know what? It doesn't matter. It, the skin does not matter. Yeah, right. I think it at doesn't. all. The, what you're doing in the game is when when a, a question comes up, you're trying to answer it. It's usually like a name X amount of things out of this category, right? Right. Uh, name two of the Beatles, right? And in most games where you want to be different, in this one you want to actually try to get the exact same answer... As everybody else. As everybody else. So, the majority. Yeah. So uh, most people are going to think of uh, you know Lennon and McCartney in, right. in this particular version. You don't want to be the weird one. You don't want to yeah. name... Ringo! Yeah. You know. Pete Best! Yeah, you you, you want to name the things the that are thing. most likely to come up in in other people's uh, answers because that scores you more points. You get more points based on how many people in have the same answer as you. In this version, there's a beehive, and when you get things wrong, your piece actually moves down, and it's like you're getting kicked out of the beehive because you're not. With everybody, you ain't, you ain't working in tune. In the old ver, in the what were you thinking? There was just one loser. Now a lot of times in Hive Mind, there's still only one loser, but there is an opportunity that more than one person can lose in Hive Mind. So and then and then when one person loses, the game ends. Yes, this is no. There is a winner. <laughs> I mean, we still. Yeah, there's still a winner because you're still proudly win around. Yeah, because there's but like a point total. The, the kind main of thing. thing is uh, bashing whoever uh, is the one loser was not good enough to to keep up. Yeah, right. Kill off the yeah. weak link. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, so number seventy nine, Hive Mind. Yeah, it's a good game. All right, well let's do my seventy nine. I'm the only one who's played it at the table. Uh, Out of all two of us. <laughs> um, 79 is Dune. Uh, it's also, they reskinned it with uh, uh, Rex after they lost the IP of Dune. 
They brought it back out, and I know some people really like that. It's uh, I have it. I haven't actually played it. Rex is in the of universe it. of uh, Twilight. Twilight Imperium. Uh, yeah, Dune is a very asymmetrical, or whatever you call it, where everybody has a certain power. Uh, and you're playing, and, the, and it's one of those games that I think there's six factions in the original Dune. They just re-released the the version. I have not played the new version. This is me basing it off the old version. Right. Uh, and there were six factions, I think. And uh, it played perfect at that total. Six. Uh, and the game has... Is it, is it time for a rant again? Sometimes a game is supposed right. to be played at a certain amount. Right. It's okay if you make the game playable at different amounts, but right. tell me somewhere on the box the amount that you expect it to play. <laughs> right. If it's four to six, cool, but if it's six is the number, <laughs> give me that right. number. Don't tell me that the game plays great at, it's two to four, and then I play it at three, and that the third thing just breaks. And one of the, and the one person at the table is basically the kingmaker, who just decides who else wins at the table. Yeah, it's awful. Just tell, tell me the prime number that you beta tested it at, and it worked the best. This is the top 100 and rules to live by. Yeah. <laughs> Dune, six player, freaking great. And the winning way to win is different from all the factions. and But more importantly, you can end up playing a 45-minute, hour-long version of the game, or all day. <laughs> it can, and I mean, that's the, that's the gap. It could go, it, the game could be very long. Uh, and I'm assuming that's why the Rex thing worked for it, because, you know, the other game's super long. Uh, but yeah, so my 79 is Doom. Uh, and I, at some point, I'll get the new version and play it. No, we'll have to pull out, uh, Curious Rex at some point here, because yeah. I, I, it's been sitting on a shelf for <laughs> three years now. Yeah. It's, I, I really love Doom. Um... 78, uh, Days of Wonder, Shadows Over Camelot. I also haven't played this one. Oh, Shadows Over Camelot is, it might be the first game that had a traitor in it. Uh, so it's Days of Wonder, so it looks great. And it was back in the day where they were making, uh, Mr. The Abbey, uh, Mystery Express, uh, Cleopatra, you know, those types. Uh, and they... You know, they made Shadows of Camelot. There's a there's a one expansion for it, Merlin's Company. Uh, everybody plays your Knights of the Round Table. Uh, somebody might be uh, if you play Battlestar Galactica or any of those other games with the traitor, you know how the game plays. Everybody plays to the end. One guy could be stabbing you all in the back, and you don't know. Uh, it's a game I have not played it in a long time uh, because of other games, Dead of Winter with its trader mechanism, kind of overtook it. Uh, but I, I I like games that has the one trader. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, there's, I think there's a few of them. There's a few here. of them now, and I... It, it just adds something to the game where, blind, there's one person in your group who's pretending to be your buddy, and he's actually working against the group. And if you are a hobby gamer and you're proficient in in gaming. It's like when you play uh, Spyfall, you know? If somebody who isn't good at playing games ends up with the spy card. You're gonna find them. You're gonna find them really quickly. I mean, because they just, they just don't know how to react when all of a sudden they realize, oh, I have to play the game a little different than everybody else. Uh, and that's the same thing with Shadows Over Camelot or, or Dead of Winter and stuff. You have to find that medium space to where they th you, they believe you're they're, you're on their side, but really you're not. Uh, so as as a favorite, that's a that's one of my favorite mechanics is the trader. So I really like it. So number seventy eight, Shadows Over Camelot. Seventy eight. Seventy eight. I feel like I have this written down backwards. No. Uh -oh. Because I believe the actual name of the game... So I had written this tortoise and the hare, but I believe the actual name of the game is Hare and the Tortoise. I believe it is. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, out of the uh, 
they did a line of games, so the storybook games. The storybook games, yeah. Um, they're easy to spot on the shelf because they all look like a book. Um, this game is... Uh, the, there's a lot of them. This, yeah, this game is a racing game, um, but the the racers in the game are all animals. There's of course the tortoise and the hare. There's also a lamb, a fox, a wolf. Uh, wolf. Um, each one has a different uh, way of moving, and uh, like how many spaces they can move, and uh, if they have any special triggers on them, and those are all determined by. Uh, cards. So you have cards in your hand, and uh, when it's your turn, you're going to play one, two, three, however many of uh, one particular animal, but you're yeah. going to put them into uh, a group that's being played in the center. Yeah. And when that group hits uh, four of a certain animal, or eight total cards, I believe, that starts uh, the race. That starts the movement. The, the, the movement for the round. Yeah. Um, and then, so you'll add up the amount of each animal that's out there and then move them accordingly. Um, but you are trying to get specific animals to You're, you're betting win, on the animals. To win <laughs> or to come in second in the right. race. And that's determined randomly at the beginning of the game. Uh, for your first one, you get one card that's just thrown to you and you're stuck with that. But then, when you get your initial hand of cards, you, you can choose like one of those one. out of there as your other animal that you're trying to get to win. Could be the same animal. It can be different. That's the strong. That's strong style right there. Yeah, that's that's all. <laughs> that's all in. That's and all in. Um, and, like, then you, and then you get points based on where your animal or two animals that you have set aside yeah. actually place in the race. And again, uh, this looks like a little kids game. If you go to a gaming store, it is probably in the kids section. Yes, uh, it is not a kids game. This is uh, this it, is yellow, right? Yeah. Um, all of their games are super bright, colorful, they get very good artists to work on them. Yeah. So most of them, when they have these kid-oriented things, like, you think they're all going to be kids' yeah. games. Um, but that cover's a lie. It is. Because this game can be very cutthroat. Yes. Um. It's really good for adults. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, and it's not, um... It's not super long. It's probably the shortest racing game you can find. Yeah, it's third that I've seen. Under thirty minutes. Yeah. Um, the board is really. short. I'm sure there'll be more racing games on our list. I think this is probably going to be this the the shortest racing game that you're going to find. Yeah. Uh, that we actually care about. Yeah. Um, which is again great. We like the like you got to have that good mix. Um, most of the shorter games are going to end up. Uh, on the lower end of my list, we're still kind of on the back end. Um, but we're definitely going to run into that one on my list. But if you like racing games, yeah. which I do, you like shorter games, yeah. expect this one to be much higher for you. Yeah. Um, that's it's, this one just comes down to like personal preference. Yeah. So, uh, but I can definitely recommend it. Hair and the tortoise, not tortoise and the hair. Yeah. Um, that's number 78, number 77, Gotta get back to deck building. It's, mm -hmm. it's been so long. Deck building. Uh, number 77 is Trains. Yeah! Trains is a deck builder where you are, well, running trains. Yeah. Uh, you're running trains on a, uh, a map of, uh, it's a fake Japanese city? I can't remember. It's very hard to remember all these details. Anyways, you're building up trains and stations on a map, and you're doing that. With a deck of cards. This is by the same people who did automobiles. Yeah. Um, they're pretty good with the deck builders. They're not the best. Right. They are pretty good with the deck builders. I like it. It's, it's Dominion with a board. Yes, it is Dominion with a board, um, which we talked about Dominion previously. If you're around for that video, yeah. not going to make it on our list, but offshoots, things that add extra mechanics, things that yeah. sort of evolve from there. Uh, I'm big on deck building. And again, so Dominion and Trains on the shelf at the same time. Which do you want to play? I'm always going to Always Trains. trains. I'm always going to yes. grab that one. Um, not much else to say about it. There's a good chance there's we a bunch talk of, about it again. So There's a bunch of expansions also. For I have never played with the expansions. I've only played the base, base game. game. Yeah. So there's a bunch of different like maps and stuff too. It's, it's just really good. Solid game. Okay, so that was your 76, 77. Or 77. 77. Uh, 
My 77 is Dice Throne, uh, which is basically Yahtzee Street Fighter. If I had to... Level King of Tokyo. Which has to describe it. Uh, Each... There's season one and season two that are all right there. Uh, So there's what? uh, Eight... So six and six out of the box, I think. Or eight and eight. Eight and eight. I don't... There's a lot of characters. Yeah. There's like, so if you pick up one box, you're going to get six to eight if it's in the first season. The second season is actually split up in... Twos. Packs of two. So right. you would pay basically the same amount for like a full board game if it was all put together, but you can just buy it in the chunks you want right. as well. And if you get one box, you can play two... If you, Just two of you can play just with that one box. Uh... Each character is a little different. It's a little bit like Street Fighter, where the characters are. Each character's dice is you know, actually unique. League of Legend, whatever you want to do, but whatever it's right. You can't just pull out like uh, you can't just pull out an old bag of six sided dice and like replace right. them in there. They have different dice, and sometimes diff- I believe the dice have different amounts of certain symbols, like mm-hmm. from side to side. Um, so that you're more likely to use certain things on certain characters, more defensive abilities here, more offensive abilities there. And it has really good... Roxley Games does a really job, good job also, like Stonemaier. When they put out a game, it looks great. The components are great. Uh, it comes out, you get a little tray, you get a little thing that folds out with your character on it, and on the character sheet, basically... It shows all your moves, your special moves, your Yahtzee powers. So you're going to roll the dice, and just like Yahtzee, you're going to get a couple chances to re-roll dice. Based on your dice, you can look around on your sheet and see what you're able to do. Uh, And again, if you roll all Yahtzees, you know, depending on what character it is. Right, there's usually big powerful abilities. Big powerful abilities, if you can roll six of a kind or whatever. Uh, and then you're just trying to knock the other guy out of the game. Knock his health down to nothing. Right. You also have a deck of cards that you're using, which are uh, basically power-ups or ways to yeah. manipulate the dice. Um, each turn you'll you'll gain a certain amount of like points, and those points can be spent to use the cards, right. um, which will help you. Uh, and I'm gonna. this is one of those games where I feel it plays better at two-player. But right. it can play as many characters as you want, I think. But when uh, you're yeah. fighting, you damage the guy to your. Yeah, this right? is. It plays. Uh, it plays in the same. It plays with the magic multiplayer rule, right. which is you fight one way and then you defend another right. way. So right? I can't get to this guy until I've actually eliminated all the players between him and I. Right. So. Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, you're still, it's still very much the same kind of game. Mm-hmm. Um, however, certain characters match up differently, so yeah. your positioning can matter uh, slightly more that way. And in in that way, two-player can be better because you both sort of pick your dude. Right. And it's, you know, you know exactly what you're going against right. and, and at. It doesn't change throughout the game at all. So yeah, it works very well at two-player. I think you're playing a slightly different game yeah. when you're adding in more players. Um, I like it at two-player. I'm okay with that. Same as I was fine with like Magic being a right. multiplayer versus a two-player. Okay, well, 77 is dice thrown, and it can be season. It says season one on my sheet, but season one and two, they work together, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's all just sort of dice yeah. thrown at that yeah. point. Uh, 76. Um... 76 is probably the goofiest game I have on my sheet. And we will, the 70s? We will see. <laughs> no, no, I don't consider that a goofy game. I, that game's great. This game is a game called Coconuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. So Coconuts is definitely a game they made for kids. Uh, and... Uh, you have a monk, a plastic monkey, and a bunch of beer pong cups in the middle of the table. Basically, red solo cups, and, slightly smaller, and, and they're in multiple colors, red and yellow, points, but. and red are worth more than yellow. And you have a monkey who has like a little tensioned arm. Yeah, like put, a like a little catapult. Yeah, and you put a little co- fake coconut on trebuchet for <laughs> for our redditors. And you and you 
flick coconuts and attempt to get them into cups. And there's some cards you can play, like you can play a card and cover their eyes while they're shooting. Uh, And when you acquire cups, you put them in front of you and build a pyramid, but they're open. So you can aim at another person's cups and try and like eliminate their cup. It's super fun. It shouldn't be. The coconuts are also not like uniform shape. They're right. all slightly odd. Yeah. So and they bounce. It's, they're like rubbery. Yeah. So it's not like a perfectly balanced right. skill game. <laughs> it's a it's a dexterity <laughs> game, but there's a bit of luck involved. It's super goofy. It's a little more pricey than as I. I th- it's like mid twenties to thirties, I think, to get it. Sure, but it sort of makes sense with the with the monkeys themselves. Yeah. Somebody had to put those together. So, but if you like like a goofy game, you would have played as a kid. Like if you went to Fred Meyer now or or Kroger's or Target or Walmart and went into the kid game section, you know that pie game that that's popular that people play. Okay, this game's actually good. <laughs> That's the difference. It it looks like one of those games, but it's actually just a, it's it's just a really good dexterity. I'll just I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it right now. I am ashamed to say that I. Uh, it's not in your top one hundred. I am confident only because I had to. I lost mm. this list. Then yeah. I had to rebuild the list, and yeah. I think I just didn't put it in <laughs> as because there's no way it doesn't make it into my yeah. into my top one hundred. <laughs> it is super fun. Yeah, yeah, it's a kids like this is this is not one of those like deceptively not a kids game. This yeah. is a kids game. This yeah. is designed for kids. This is everything kids. Yeah, this is a kids game, but we're, you're playing it as an adult. But it is fantastic. Yeah, uh, I sat here, but but also like because the dexterity part of it is not perfect. You can sort of play to win as an adult against right. a kid. Yeah, and not win. And not win. Right. Whereas in a lot of games, like, you can't play fairly with kids, right. between kids and adults. Um, but you can here, and it's a game where even, even like, I'm highly competitive with games. I'm not going to feel bad about losing right. this game. Um, just fun. I think we have shown this game to six or seven people. And it's one of those games where after they play, they're like, oh, oh, Amazon? Go on Amazon. Going on Amazon. Going to get me a copy of uh, Coconuts. So, so yeah. So, my 76 is Coconuts. Um, now I just feel bad. It's not on my list. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 76. Uh... Hot garbage compared to coconuts. R.I.P. Coconuts. No, no, it's re- it's really not. But maybe seventy five turns into coconuts. I don't know. Uh, no, seventy seventy six is a uh, is deep sea adventure. Oh yeah. I think this is the 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 finale of my uh, submarine themed games. Uh, deep sea adventure is another pressure yeah. luck game about collecting treasure. Rio Grande's submarine didn't make your list. <laughs> not this time. Not this time. Uh, this this game is the shorter, tighter version of Deep Blue. Yes. Um, there is little chits <laughs> on the table in a line. The tops have a number, one through three. Yep. You know that the Zero. lowest number... No, no, the tops. Okay, the tops. The tops have a number, one yeah. through three. Those help you determine the order you right. lay them down in, but they go down random. On the other side, you know that the ones only have zero through like two on them. Yeah, they're worthless. The twos have two through like seven on them, <laughs> and then the threes have like seven through twelve on them. Yeah, but you're blind drawing them, and you yeah. have dice, but these dice only have one, two, and three on them, and you're rolling yeah. them both. <laughs> and the total number is how many spaces down, how many chits down you get to move. The problem is. <laughs> So a, once you pick up an item, a treasure, a treasure that now reduces the number that you move. That yeah. number goes down by if it's one treasure, you're, minus down, one. You're, you're down minus one. And the most you could ever move was six, and now it's five. Mm-hmm. Also means that you're losing. You begin to lose oxygen uh, from the submarine that you're attached to. 
and everybody is sharing the same oxygen, yeah. so the same pool. So you have to try to get down, get a few treasures, get yourself back up before you run out of oxygen. It's hard enough to do that on your own. <laughs> With everybody else getting greedy. But then you have people who are getting greedy <laughs> or who realize they can't make it back themselves. Right. And they begin to stack up as many treasures as they can to murder everybody. <laughs> to, to kill so everyone. So you aren't just like pressing your own luck here. Yeah. Uh, you're pressing like a communal. But it's not a co-op game. Yeah. The person who gets out with the most treasure is the winner. <laughs> uh, short game. You get three rounds. You get three rounds, yeah, so you have a few a few attempts. Uh, treasures <laughs> that don't make it back up actually sink down to the bottom, and but they start up. to become stacked, so yeah. they're actually worth more. Yeah. Super quick. <laughs> super, super. Tiniest greed, game. Greed kills. Like, literally smallest game on my list. Oink Unfortunately, games. it's made by Oink Games, who are not here in America. I believe they now have a deal with Target. Well, maybe their games will then start to uh, price wise match the size. Right. I believe I believe that they're gonna. Match I believe when this first came out, it was, it was ridiculous. Thirty dollars, right, for a box this big. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, hopefully, I know I've seen it for at least twenty now, which is which is closer. I think Target now is a deal with them, and that's why the price is dropped. I think it's worth the money because it's a really good game. I'm just warning you ahead of time when you <laughs> first open the box and you're like. Where's the rest of my game? <laughs> Where's the rest of my? Don't worry. Why don't Why don't I get gold bullion with my for my treasures? <laughs> um, we already talked about deep, uh, deep blue a little ways back, which is yeah. almost the same mechanics, just extra stuff going on there. The thing is, I really like deep blue. I don't know if it ever really pass deep sea adventure, right? Uh, for me, just it, it did not out, for me. It came out first, and it was just kind of. This is perfect at the way that it is. It doesn't need anything. And if you're playing with a bunch of people who you know how to play the game, you can play a game of Deep Sea Adventure in about 15, 20 minutes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can just Faster. burn through it. Lightning round. Yeah. So, lightning round, everybody's going to die. Yes. <laughs> but, lightning round. Uh, so, that was 76, Deep Sea Adventure. 75, uh, Lanterns. Yeah, Another game. Renegade game. One of their earlier ones yeah. that I played. Um, you are collecting colors of fireworks to turn in for points. Um, but whenever you place a piece, um, the positioning of it also gives uh, also adds to the collection of everybody else around the table. So you have to be very careful about how you're placing pieces because you don't want to inadvertently give people uh, the piece they're the looking edge for. Or the advantage to yeah. to the especially if you're going for the same piece. Right. Um, there is ways to get additional pieces on your side to double up colors and therefore gain more, but you still have to worry about which way you've just aligned that piece, like on the table. Um, so again, another one of those games. Uh, That's a really good mechanic, by the way. The, the mechanic of laying the tile, whatever color's facing the other person, that's what they get. Yeah. That's um, a neat little neat mechanic. A lot of games that we like in the last couple of years do that. Yeah. Um, and they do it in a bunch of different ways. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, Machi Kuru or yeah. Kingdoms of Valeria, where, yeah. where you're still acquiring things when it's not your turn, keeping you slightly Keep more you engaged, engaged with the game. On the other turns. Uh, this one is one that you have more control over than a lot of those games. It's not random. You're deciding, but you really only right. have so many ways to, to throw it down. So you still are sort of caught, um, but you get to think about it a little bit more. You get to have a little more influence on it. So uh, number 75, Lanterns. All right, so my 75, already been said. Uh, I played this game... When I was a kid, it was one of the first two hobby games I ever got. Uh, one of those other hobby games, which was Talisman, fell off my list finally. So, my 75 is Cosmic Encounter. Uh, I, we played it a lot. We memorized the, whatever it was, 50 aliens that were in the box, the original box. Yeah, for the new kids in the audience, tell us what, what we're doing. 
Cosmic Encounter is a it's really a negotiation game where you have five planets. Uh, you have this little like cone. You you have no choice who you fight. You flip a card over. It tells you what color you have what what space system you have to go fight at. You aim the cone. You put your spaceships on one end of the cone, and you're playing cards numbered either negotiation to like one hundred or whatever. Negotiation is separate, and then right. one through one hundred yeah. adding. And there, are, and there are negatives and other stuff like that you can throw in there. But it, over the years, they've made it so it's very malleable with what you're playing. Because there are characters that win by scoring, by having a negative number. Stuff like that. Um, goal of the game is, be the first guy to have five planets in the other solar systems. Right. Once you get the fifth planet, you, you automatically win. Now, the thing is, you can share a win in this game. If two people are sitting at four and you're like, let's just share the win, jump on, we'll go take that planet, two people can win. Now, there's a lot of traitorous things can happen in the game because the person will be like, no, never mind, I don't want you. Uh, <laughs> well, Traitor-like mechanics. Interesting. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's a, a very old game. It's been around forever. Um but and it still just it still stands up and there's been like I think it's been housed by four different companies now I don't even remember who has it now it might be Fantasy Flight I don't know but I remember the game is still great uh, so you know don't not play it because it's an older game right if if you have an opportunity to play Cosmic Encounter give it a try they, no game is the same as the last one you played because there's so many different alien powers. Right, even so, out of the base box, yeah. there's around 50. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's my 75, Cosmic Encounter. So 74, uh, it used to be a collectible card game, but it is no longer, so it's on my list. And that is Doomtown, I believe it's Doomtown Reloaded. Reloaded. Yep. Uh, so everybody who gets a box gets the same, gets the same cards. Basically, you're building a little town... Everybody has, like, a faction of guys, and you're equipping them with guns and stuff, and you're playing cards with your poker hands to defeat the other guys in combat. And you're trying to control spaces to win the game. Uh, I don't get to play this game a lot. A lot of, I don't know. You, I played once with you. You didn't really like it. Uh, or you got pinned down in town and couldn't get into town square or something. Some, yeah, something weird yeah. happened where it didn't, but it didn't work for me. I wouldn't play it again. Just there's so many games to play. It was like, all right, well, we've done right. that one. Let's move on. Uh, but, uh, there's also a role playing game based off it with Deadlands. I think that's what it right. started out as. And then it became a card game. I loved it as a collectible card game. I love it as an LCG uh, I, I just like the mechanics of the silver bullets fighting the copper bullets. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a complicated fighting system. It's not for everybody. That's true. I thought it was going to be more poker oriented. Right. The way it was described to me, it plays a part. That's for sure. Right. It plays certainly. a part. But I was trying to play poker in the game. Right. And, not... and you can cheat, but a guy can play. There's a lot of cards that say you're cheating scum or whatever, and they and then that ruins your hand. If you're cheating. Uh, so, uh, so you might have number seven, four is Doomtown Reloaded. All right. 74 on my end is going to be Pitch Car. Ah, Pitch Car. Uh, Pitch Car is a dexterity uh, racing game. The, the object is to do uh, laps on a track that you build. The pieces are modular, so you can change the way the track layout is. Um, but your car is actually just a disc, and that you're you're <laughs> flicking the disc to uh, move it turn to turn. Um, and they just released the loop to loop. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully, it's not loop to loop, a la coaster coaster, coaster park. park. <laughs> still mad. Still, still mad, mad at this still day. Mad. Um. So pitch car. Um. A lot of the. Uh, trick with it is the fact that just not every part of the track has uh, railing. Right. So 
your car can can just go off the Fly side off of the, the road, and then you got to back up to where you were the previous turn. And you got to do it again. Uh, but now everybody's had a turn past you. So on the one hand, all the <laughs> cars are out of the way. Right. Um, but on the other hand, you're able to flick back. So now you have to try to figure out how to cover that distance. But again, you can't just like smash you just, the car. You just hit it harder. Yeah, you can't just smash <laughs> the car any harder because you're still missing those pieces of rail. Yeah. Um, there's all kinds of... I haven't played with very many of the like uh, additional modular special pieces because um, this game gets expensive really fast. Yeah, it's pricey. Uh, base game is already going to cost you around ninety dollars, I think. Yeah. Now that gets you a pretty large track, bigger than anything we could make on this table. This right. table is not a good like size for it. Um, and then the additional things can cost anywhere from like thirty to sixty to maybe ninety again. I don't know how much the loop to loop is, but the, you can add in things like I think it was ramps. a Kickstarter, but I'm sure it'll come out to retail. But you can you can add things that'll adjust like the level that you're on. So right. there's like ramps and stuff. Uh, there's a loop to loop. Well, there's like little ramps with a space, so you have to flick it and land on the other side. Yeah. Um, so I mean, it's just a dexterity game. I mean, at the end of the day, no, the rules are really simple. Yeah. Flick your car. Flick your car. Don't flick it off of the. Right. Don't flick it off of the track. Right. Um, but a lot of fun. And if I ever get my way, this this channel will be doing a special. Uh, pitch, pitch car pitch event. Car. Okay. Uh, but we gotta get there first. Yeah. Uh, so that's number 74, pitch car. 73, I'm gonna have a hard time explaining. It's been a long time. It's, uh, Alhambra. Alhambra. Oh, yeah, I love that game. Um, it's very simple. You're just collecting currency to purchase... It's bidding. There's bidding part to it. Correct. I'm bidding. Yeah. You have to collect the currency in order to do so. Yeah. And then uh, pieces are shown, and then you're bidding for those pieces to add to your, like, town that you're right. building. Which you're building, like, a wall. There's, like, walls that you have to touch that go to the outside. Right. There, there is, so, again, it's puzzly. You're trying yeah. to... You have to attach certain pieces certain ways. Um, otherwise, you come up with, like, illegal placements. So you can't right. do it. You can get screwed in the um, game with the tiles that are out. Yeah, yeah, you can just have a bad run right, you where, just where it just host. doesn't work for you. Right. Um, but luckily, I haven't seen that too much when I've yeah. played. Um, but it's not... Also, a lot of expansions. They make Alhambra, yeah. they make Alhambra the big box. I've really only played the like the base game, and it's not yeah. complicated. Right. Um, it's fairly straightforward. Not necessarily like a beginner game. I don't, it's not no, like I would say the, the first game I'm going to show somebody. Right. Um, but like... The numbers work well. Mechanically, it comes yeah. out really well that if two pretty evenly matched players are playing against each other, the score is going to be super tight. It's one of those older games that came out in the you know early, late 80s, early 90s, I think. I can't right. remember how old it is, but it has that beige... Right, it's got the color scheme. Yeah. Uh, that, that just... Drives people away from it at this point. Yeah, a lot of these... Not well. Not a lot of my games, I'll say, but right. there, there are a lot of games that are good that have a very dull presentation. Puerto Rico, El Grande. I mean, it, yeah, where it has that look. The list goes on and on yeah. for those. Um, so, but we've picked through the weeds. We found, <laughs> we found the flowers as dull as they may yeah. look. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's um, a good game. but Alhambra, yeah, yeah, good game. What was that number? I don't know. We've been here forever. So you're 73? Yeah, 73. All right. So that makes it neat. All right. So my 73 is what I like to call the Carcassonne Killer. Okanagan, Valley of the Lakes. Okay. Uh, it's made by Madigo. It's over here somewhere. It is made by Madigo. Yeah. Made by Madigo. Uh, say it's, it's Carcassonne. You're building tiles, but first it's... Looks better uh, on the table. Yes. Uh, and then there's special powers instead of like Carcassonne when you're placing stuff. If it's opened and like your pieces and my pieces are at the same location and it's my turn, I get first pick of what's there and we, div we divide the stuff up. It's not a, and it doesn't close it out. Right. Um, 
But it is a tile laying so the, the area big, control the game. The big difference being that when you play tiles, you're also playing basically uh, influence yeah. uh, tokens on top of it that right. determine how much influence you have in the area to determine who's like first, second, third for right. owning those. It's not an outright you own this or you don't. Right. There's like levels of influence. And uh, for me, if I'm gonna, if I have to choose between playing Carcassonne or, or it's this. It's this every time. So, Okanagan, Valley of the Lakes, number 73. My 72 is a little tiny game. It looks like Wink Games maybe made it, but they didn't. It was Sashi and Sashi. And it is Wind, Wind the, the Film. film. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, Wind the Film, uh, you're a tourist taking pictures, and uh, you hold your cards in your hand, and this is a, I would say this is an elaborate card game. Because you hold the cards in your hand, but you're not allowed to move them. Right. I mean, you need to hold them like this the whole game. Basically. Right. They are stuck in place. Right. And so when you're picking stuff up based on the number you pick up or whatever, it goes in your hand like this. And then at the end of the round, after you've played cards, you have to wind the film. So you take a card from the back of your hand, move it to the front of your hand. Uh, and so you're trying to put things out numerically in order. By, and by color. And so I can't remember how many colors are five, I think. So you have five stacks and you're trying to build numbers. Now, you can close out a row and start a new one. But you can't until you close it out. And so if you skip numbers, you just skip numbers. Uh, so while you're doing that, it's also a hand management game where you're trying to get the numbers you want to the back of your hand so you can skip it to the front so that's the game, the card you can play. And if you, as I remember, if you draw two cards, you play two. Or whatever you whatever you take, you have to play. That's not right. Uh, so, but it's just this little, neat little game. It's impossible to get in America, which sucks. Um, we have a friend who has a friend in Japan, and he gets the Sashi and Sashi games, uh, and... I have not played a Sashi and Sashi game yet that I didn't like. I have uh, liked them all. Correct, yes. So, uh, but Wind the Film, it is a super fun game. If you try to buy it here, it's like $100 for a little tiny box. Uh, yeah, this is a box like 50 cards. Kind yeah, of yeah. Like, it is not a lot. Yeah. Uh, I but, mean, it's more than that, but it, you get the idea. But if you can get a copy of it, Wind the Film, it's awesome. And that is my 72. 72. 72 got talked about uh, on mine, uh, like a video back. So we're, we're going to do a little refresher here. Okay. 72, uh, Imperial Settlers. Yeah. Um, you're building a city. Uh, your city is sort of themed based on the deck that you have in right. front of you. Some people are better at just building. Some are better at fighting, fighting or trading. Yeah. Um, you start with this sort of middle section that determines what you get per round, um, and then you build sort of uh, simple buildings that are resource things into complex buildings um, that are ultimately points or and uh, various uh, bonuses. And the right side, can lo you can lock those down, and on the other side... It's a sort of free game that can be terrorized yeah, by the other players. They can be, they can be destroyed. Um, I have not played 51st State right. uh, yet, which is supposed to be, I mean, it's supposed to be the same game with a different skin. Apocalypse. Um, yeah, so I'm sure I'm sure I will like that one uh, and then just there's, as well. And then there's the new one. The Empire of the North. Empire of yeah, the North. Yeah, I haven't gotten to that one either. So Imperial Settlers is holding strong. Um, <sighs> I've played... Just like one of the expansions, I know there's quite a few there's Amazons and. Um, but like, if you've played one like race, uh, you've sort of played them all. Yeah. Um, you have enough understanding to like tackle one of the other ones, but of course, there is sort of strategies built into the different races. Right. Um, so you have to sort of. Uh, you have to play. You gotta be you, fluid enough to 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 yeah. get into and do it the way that they want them to. 
Unless you are crazy good. <laughs> yeah. Um, or, or, or stupid, perfect cards show up uh, to, to build your city uh, right. a certain way. Um, but, I mean, that's how those games kind of go. Uh, not like, the art isn't, um, like, big, bombastic, like a, like a yellow it's, game. Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's cartoony. But yeah, but it's, it's very, it is cartoony, yeah. and it, and it's, like, uh, colorful, like, distinct mm -hmm. when you have one set of right. races over the other. There's generic buildings that you end up with yeah. that are all the same, but, like, your specific race buildings sort of stand out. Yeah. Um, yeah. And fun, very like evenly matched. Yeah. There's no race that's like inherently better, right. like over the top of another that I've seen. I'm sure if somebody played it a thousand times, we don't play games like that. We play them four times, five times. Yeah. Um, so within the you know grasp of the game that I've right. seen, it's all very well balanced. Uh, Imperial Settlers seventy two. Hey, let's go with one more we've already talked about. Oh, yeah. uh, 71 is going to be Welcome To. Yeah, Welcome Again, To. Uh, roll and write game, except no rolling. This one's done with cards. On one side of the card is a number. On the other side of the card is a power, um, a power or an action, basically, yeah. in the game. So as you play, you flip cards over off of three different decks. That way, each turn, you have three different numbers and three different powers, but... One power is tied to one number, whichever ones are side by side, and you use them together, and you use them on uh, any one building in any of the three uh, plots or housing areas that you have. Uh, there's a bunch of different mechanics that way. Uh, you can build fences, which will break your uh, neighborhoods down into smaller sections that can be worth more points, or maybe you don't want to do that because you've already built up to where big right. chunks of area are worth a lot of points so then you got to watch out about using too many fences uh you're trying to you know certain houses have pools in the background so you're trying to use the right numbers in the right areas so that you get to both fill up that pool and not screw up the your numbers have to go uh increasing in order so yeah you don't want to put a 13 right in the mm -hmm. pool in the middle because the numbers only go up to 15 and you got five houses on the other side of it so there's no way you're going to fill that out properly yeah so you're just kind of um hedging your bets on what you think you can do next in the game. Right. So you see what's in front of you, and you go, okay, well, how many of these lower or higher numbers are going to be left that I can still work with? Uh, so can I can I risk putting this thing out over here, or do I got to play with the safer numbers? Goes right. a thousand different ways in this game. You can play up to a literally any amount of people. 100 people! So I've seen it played... I think on Twitch, yeah, they where do. people can play it at home. Yeah, uh, as long as you have the as long as you have the sheet. Yeah, one person you know has the camera set on the cards and flips them, and then if you got the sheets at home, you can literally everybody can play. Yeah, um, and but you can also get a surprising amount of different ways people have used these three cards that they see, mm -hmm. like the branching variants that you can right. end up with, where nobody's board looks particularly similar, even though you were playing with the exact same choices every time. Right. Uh, that is Welcome To, number 71. My 71 is Concordia. Uh, Concordia has the uh, Puerto Rico uh, thing in it where there's cards. Everybody selects a card. That's the power you're going to get. But if I select a card, I get the better use of it. Everybody else gets the crappier use of it. Uh, Concord Concordia is... I have not played the expansion, what I've heard, which I've, which is Venus, I think, mm -hmm. and I hear that's really good. Uh, I've, I've still only played the base game of Concordia, but like Puerto Rico, like Alhambra, like those types of games where it's just like it doesn't look great when you see the box. It kind of fits with the like theming more, I guess, than right. some of those games feel like it does. But yeah, it has that old hobby game look to it right uh now the venus one does look a little newer and so i think that one's getting a little bit more buzz uh but uh concordia i i've probably played it five or six times it's a solid game they also made a boat version of it uh, transatlantic which is basically the same game except with boats uh 
I have not played that one. Yeah. And, uh, but, uh, I pick it up and give it a shot. It is, like I said, it does look older. And with the FOMO, the fear of missing out on the newer games and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I gotta kind of hit that middle ground where you, you, you give those older games a try also, along with the newer games. Uh, because it is amazing how when you're playing some of those older games, you're like, man, man, I wish, wish that game over there that looks like that played as good as this game. It happens frequently <laughs> yeah. around here. Where you're playing a new game, and I, I mean, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna, let's throw somebody under the bus. Uh, Sorcerer City. Had a neat... Super colorful. Looks great. You see it, you're like, okay, that's, you know, it feels like time and effort was put into this game. Not that it wasn't. Right. But, uh, you, from the outset, you're like, okay, there's clearly work crafted into this. And sometimes you see those old games and you're like, it doesn't look that way. But it was <laughs> at one point. Right. It's just the amount of stuff we can do now. Right. But yeah, take take Concordia and man, put a put a shiny new right. coat on there, and it'll sit side by side, just right, perfect with anything that came out in the last year. Yeah, like, no problem. It and still does too. You just don't immediately go to it. Your right. eyes don't say take this game. It's the old uh, judging a book by its cover. You look at the shiny things on the shelf, and that one doesn't look shiny anymore. But it's really good. Uh, give it a try. I, you, this is the first year I think Puerto Rico did not make my list this year. I am shocked. So I I am too. I'm looking through my list and I'm like, I'll not see it. So it, like I said, San Juan made my list, but Puerto Rico didn't. But again, it's one of those games where I wish somebody would take Puerto Rico and make a really cool version, looking version of it. Stop talking about Concordia at some yeah. point here. Yeah, so, okay, well, <laughs> 71 is Concordia. It, it, it's a it's a bigger box also. It's just kind of weird shaped. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of like flat, but like big, like a like a like a portrait. I need uh, your bo- I need all boxes to now be made in thirteen by thirteen <laughs> fit for a Kellex. Yes, IKEA shelf. Yeah, so I can keep buying these forever. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so seventy one Concordia. I, I mean, I wish more people would play it. Uh, I, until like I said, until they re skin it or it's probably not going to happen. Doesn't need it. People are still buying it. We're good. I don't know if they're actually buying it anymore. I don't know. So, so Concordia. <laughs> they are after they watch this because it's 71 on the list. 71. Concordia. Uh, and we'll be back next time with 70 to 61. We're into the 60s. So all these were hot garbage. Don't worry. We yeah. Don't no, forget anymore. these ones. We're getting to the real ones <laughs> the, next the, time. the real good ones are coming. <laughs> I am Hugh. I'm Joel. We'll catch you next time.